around the building, there should be no trees tall enough to fall onto it. In general, they should get bigger the further they are away from the building. Uh, you want to avoid things like pines because they tend to fall over suddenly and, and go a long way. You should have pine groves uh, in different places, but uh, it's better to have something like oaks or right near the building you could have some fruit trees. You do have to worry about uh, what's a building compatible tree in case it litters a lot of stuff, but generally it's a good idea to have uh, food growing all around uh, where you're at. Uh, this particular forest here is slowly being converted into a food forest. So there's more and more things you can just eat as you walk around. Uh, it still is not uh, productive enough to support very many people with a varied diet. And uh, that's because this process takes a long, long time. And because we aren't forcing the system by growing what we think we want to grow, instead we're growing what wants to grow here. Uh, let me say that again to make it more clear maybe. Uh, we don't water, fertilize, and force the ground to do what we think we should grow. We work in conjunction with the earth to see what kind of soil there is, what kind of rain pattern, and we try and uh, do agriculture within those limits. Uh, there's a lot of smart things we can do with food preservation that extend the, the growing season, but the truth is in part of the year we're just not going to be able to grow much food. Um, of course, we can try and keep building microclimates and uh, pushing, pushing the starts a little bit further ahead like uh, we've done with broccolis and many other things. Um, and we're seeing some odd winds actually of plants that, that do survive all winter long and can produce food. Uh, Selga is now uh, pretty much a solved problem. It's astounding. So very soon we'll be able to have salad greens most of the year, uh, which is nice because there aren't a lot of good ones around here. Um, what does this have to do with the buildings? Well, all that water that got captured, you can calculate how much water people need to survive with a bosque type lifestyle versus the city. And you can calculate how much we have to use on agriculture because we are willing to do it sometimes. Uh, and you can calculate your roof space and more importantly, your storage space. Uh, the thing about living with the rain capture is you're off of the water grid at that point. It's a fantastic thing because then you don't have to be in conflict with your neighbors. If you have an entire society which, in which everyone lives in a building that captures the water they need to survive, then you'll have a much stronger society uh, because so many uh, civilizations have essentially collapsed because of their, their uh, too fancy irrigation and agricultural systems. So we can calculate maximum amount of rainfall. We should try and capture all of it. Uh, I, have been confused about how to best store water. And I have a book about it. It's a good one. It's by Art Ludwig called Water Storage. And in that book, he talks about many different types of storage systems. There isn't one that's perfect, uh, unless you are infinitely wealthy, which I don't think uh, we are as a planet. Um, I built here a ferro-cement cistern. I don't really like those because I know that there will be an earthquake someday. And at the time when you need water the most, they will break. I also have a large stone one. It's probably the case for that one too. It already failed once and I did, we didn't even know why. And that's, it was pretty hard uh, years to not have a, enough water there. Uh, <clears throat> I actually have come to the conclusion, there's other options like copper and clay and all kinds of things. I've come to two conclusions. One is I agree with the sentiment that, that many people in permaculture express that uh, we should keep the water in the land as much as possible. Keep it from flowing down roads. Uh, capture it within the soil itself. That water is actually still available to us in the fruits that it grows and, and, and it's, it's actually a very good idea to make sure we don't waste any of that. Here uh, we're cutting uh, in from the road to guide water from the road off into the property and then put it in swales and key lines. Um, the other thing, and this is for the buildings, is I've come to the unpleasant conclusion that I think the large rubbery plastic black ones there's several brands available uh, of 7,000, 10,000 uh, liters. I think those are pretty good. If your building can withstand the earthquake, and that's within the building, the sun will never touch them. Uh, they're extremely strong, and they are not uh, organic, and they will last for theoretically forever. I don't know how long they would last, but maybe over a thousand years. So at, at current moment, this is my thought on that. That uh, that is the best 
uh, water storage that I at least have available to me here. Other things like stainless steel, etc., seem uh, prohib prohibitive. Um, I don't like it because it's it's not natural. But then again, I really want to have water. <laughs> I don't have any. Uh, the alternative would be to have less human population live near places with water and slowly the rivers will heal themselves. But that's a fantasy land I can't imagine. Um, here the experiment is to, to live without outside water. That includes uh, rivers and things. It does not include rain. We definitely uh, want to capture all the rain we can. I do have some buildings here that, that don't currently capture water and I uh, am bothered by that quite a bit. Uh, I believe that I have to design the roofs differently and I'm not even that motivated to do that because the, the storage is so expensive. It's so prohibitively expensive that uh, my, my cisterns all fill up anyway. I don't even have to have very good gutters. Um, but the goal should be that every single building captures water unless there's a real good reason not to. The sauna is a case where we don't. It's an earth roof and uh, all of that water uh, just kind of drains onto the ground or there's some vines and things planted. Um, I don't know if we can capture off an earth roof. We were going to test that to see what it looked like, but basically in the absence of a greater amount of storage, there's not really any point in improving the collection system. Uh, there are some remote locations that could use a cistern and a spigot and everything so people could at least wash up. That would be handy. 